Before we start this next video, let me talk to you about the tragedy of robot voices. So here's a video I recorded a little while ago. On generics. We've actually started already defined generic, generic classes before. It's like they're expected. Uh, uh, it's like 11 minutes of stuff. I don't like so that. Next video, video, anyway, I'm wondering why life takes so long to get things done. Robot voice is part of it. Anyway, uh, so on to generics. Now, we've actually already done defining generic classes before. We built a linked list deck, an array deck, all those kind of things. In those cases, uh, at the top of the class, we specified a that this was going to be a generic class. This is not a new thing. But in this video, what we're going to do is build a new one and kind of be a little more careful about what we're doing rather than just having a bunch of rules we don't quite understand. So what we're going to do in this video is create a new class called array map that's going to implement the map 61B interface which is going to be a restricted version of the map interface that's built into Java. So what do maps do? They let you associate keys with values. So you can say things like uh, Josh's grade is 30. Oh wait, no, never mind. Josh's grade is 45 and so forth. Uh, and that's what the put method does. We'll have a contains method that says whether or not Josh is in there, get that will return my grade, keys that will return the list of all keys, and then finally size, which says how many keys. I'm gonna ignore resizing. We're gonna use array-based um, and an array-based implementation. Um, and if you want to, you can try doing this on your own. Uh, this little dude in the corner, a pair of people, uh, is an indication to people who are looking only at the slides that this is an exercise. I guess this is something I added last year and forgot about, but it would have been pretty cool if I had had that in earlier slides, you would have known. Anyway, uh, so let's jump on in. Oops. Uh, so what we're gonna do is build what you just saw there. Uh, this is the project, I've already opened it up because actually I've already done this and now I had to delete it and now I'm doing it again because of robot voice. Uh, but uh, here basically we have uh, a package. Uh, in this case, the top of the code says package map 61B and that's just because real Java code is usually in packages. It doesn't really mean very much except for now. Uh, well, I guess in the next lecture we'll explore exactly what that means. Uh, but the one big difference is that now everything's gonna be inside of this special map 61B folder because everything's part of a map 61B package. And we saw a little bit of what, about that meant, what that meant in the past, uh, but it'll be a future video where I really dig in. So anyway, that's not super important. What does matter now is we want to build an array map. And so if I want to instantiate an array map, I need a place to store key value pairs. So the most natural approach is to create an array of keys. Uh, and so here I can say K, uh, we'll call them keys, and this is an array of keys. I will make that private. I will have a private v uh, values, and then I'm also gonna set up a size. And then in my array map constructor, I'll say keys equals new k, uh, but of course that won't work because you can't make generic arrays. So we have to do that silly little thing where we say k array cast uh, new object k. We also have values uh, equals v new object, uh, and we'll say size is zero. Now, of course, IntelliJ is yelling at us and it's saying, what the heck are you doing? Like, this is weird. It is weird. Oh, and there's actually a compilation error. Oh, I forgot to say a size, so we'll say 100. Um, but it's saying, hey, this is weird. What are you doing? Uh, and we just have to say, we know what we're doing, Java. Yeah, sorry, it's just a quirk of the Java type system. There's no nice way around it. You can suppress the warning, but it's still a warning. Um, now I wanna note one quick thing that's important here, which is that K and V here are totally arbitrary. I mean, instead of K, uh, I could have put horse everywhere and had horse, 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 and so forth, uh, and that would work fine. Um, but just that I have to change all these other Ks to horses. So be aware, there's nothing special about the fact that I used the letter K and V. It could have been anything. Okay, so that sets up our empty array map. And so the next thing we're gonna do is write this method called key index. So what does that do? Well, that's supposed to go through and find the key, if it exists, and return its index. And if it doesn't exist, it'll return minus one. So we're just gonna iterate through all of the keys, and we're gonna say front i, let's say equals zero, i is less than keys.si, or length, uh, then we do i plus equals one. And then we can say, if keys i equal equals key, then we'll return i, otherwise at the end we'll turn minus one. There's actually two bugs here, very subtle bugs that I'll mention um, by fixing them. <laughs> uh, so instead of equal equals, the problem with equal equals, uh, and this is something you wanna keep in mind when you're writing code, 
equal equal says, are these two memory boxes pointing at the same thing? Are the arrows pointing at the same thing? Uh, well, in this case, we don't really consider that equality uh, because if I make one dog called uh, horse and another dog named horse, these are weirdly named dogs, uh, and I check if they're equal using equal equals, well, then it won't consider them the same because they are instantiated separately. So to fix this, I'm going to use the dot equals method, and we'll discuss the dot equals method in a later lecture. Lecture. Okay. Uh, the other minor bug is that I shouldn't actually look at every key in the array. It might not really matter, um, but it's important here to note that this array, we don't want to look at all of the nulls that are going to be in this array. Uh, we instead want to do a uh, size, which is how many keys we have. Okay. Uh, so it won't really break key index because uh, unless someone's trying to get a null out of it, but maybe that's a little complicated. Okay. Uh, I, I just, I hope it makes sense that it, we should only be looking at the keys that have actually been added. Okay. And there's various little subtle bugs that can pop up as a result of that. All right, contains key. How do I do that? Well, in this case, I can just say, uh, give me the index of key. And then I can say if index is greater than minus one, then it must exist. Otherwise, we'll say it doesn't exist. Now, this code, while it works, is considered ugly by many programmers. Uh, they would probably rather you just do it in one line. Uh, we can actually just return the result of this. So this evaluates to some value, true or false. Uh, so if it's true, we return true. And if it's false, we return false. So why not just return index greater than minus one? So um, even though that looks like code that's a little too clever, it's very common. Uh, and I'd say get used to it because you're going to see it all over the place. And people who are used to writing code like that will maybe think you're cooler if you write code like that. All right, next up, put. So in this case, I want to locate the key in the array if it exists. And if so, then uh, I want to replace the current value. Otherwise, I'm going to add the key in the value. So the idea here is that, uh, as a reminder, the way a map works is if I say, put Josh's grade as 30, then put Josh's grade as 40, I don't get two grades. I get one grade, and the most recent put overwrites the original value. If you didn't know that, well, that's how maps or dictionaries work. So I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to say int index equals key index key. Uh, and then I'll say if index is minus 1, meaning it wasn't in there, uh, then I'm going to go to the end of the array, keys, and I'm going to add the new key. I'm going to go to the end of the values array. And I'm going to add the new value. Uh, and then I'm also going to say size plus equals 1. Okay. So in other words, if it's not in there, go to the end of the array, not the end of the whole array, but go to the end of all the used elements of the array, and then add the key value pair. Uh, and then finally, uh, if we don't have the index, if it already existed, I guess I'll have a return here. Uh, if it already existed, uh, in that case, we'll simply say values key uh, equals uh, value. Okay. We could also, or sorry, not key, should be uh, index. And if we also, we could also do keys index uh, equals key in order to make sure that that's true, but that's redundant because if we get to this point, we know that it's in the array, and so keys index must be key by definition. Okay. Uh, so in this case, we now have values index equals value, um, and so we'll move on. How about git? Well, the git actually it's pretty simple. I mean, to me. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the index by doing key index key, uh, and then I'm just going to return whatever's in that index, and that's the value. Now this will crash if the item is not in the array map, but that's okay because we're not we're just lazy. Okay, we'll talk about better ways to do it later. Next we'll return size, uh, and then finally we have keys, which if we look at map 61b says it's supposed to return a list of keys in this map. So to do that, well we need some kind of a list. We can't just return keys because it's an array. So I mean if we could try, it'll say nope. You're trying to give me a list, or you're trying to give me an array, and I expect a list. So there may be some method out there that will convert a Java array to a list of the same type. Uh, but I'm going to note that it's not very useful to us because we don't want the entire list, or we don't want the entire array. We only want the first size items. Uh, and so rather than going and looking up some special syntax, I'm just going to do it by hand. So I'm going to say list k key list equals new, let's say array list of k. That's one of the implementations. So this is my abstract data type over here. And this is my specific implementation. Uh, and then I'm going to say for each key, i is less than keys.length, i plus equals 1. 
we'll do key list dot add uh, keys i, and then we can just return key list. And so at this point, all my code should work. Now in the real world, I would have lots of unit tests. I would make sure this works. And when you do project two, you better not write that much code and hope it all works. I've done this like probably you know three times, including robot voice now. So I feel very confident in my work. Uh, but you should not do that. You should really write tests. Here's one we'll run in a bit. What I'm going to do first, though, just to get an intuition that it's working, rather than using an extensive set of uh, unit tests, I am going to run this code uh, using the debugger. So when I use the debugger, the breakpoint, it stops the code before this line, and then we can visualize what's inside of our actual data structure. So here we have an array. This is all my keys. These are all my values. And we can see that horse is associated with three, fish is associated with nine, uh, and then now we're going to associate house with 10. So if all goes according to plan, we'll put a house at the end of this array and 10 here, and we step over, and indeed it seems to have worked. Okay. Now there's all this extra space that we're not using, and of course it'll actually run out, but we're not going to deal with resizing in this video. So that's basically it for um, the array map, and we'll debrief what we learned doing all this and like get a big picture of the, the uh, class in a moment. But I actually want to show you a little funny thing that you're likely to encounter on project two. So here, I just suggested that we do unit testing. And in this case, we'll do a simple unit test. Let's create a new array map that goes from integer to integer. We'll associate the value five with the key two. We'll expect to get back five. And then we'll just say, hey, if I ask for the, key, the value associated with the key two, what do I get? Uh, and assume that they're equals. Uh, in this case, we actually get a strange error. And so we're going to pick apart what that error is all about in the next video. But first, uh, let's reflect on what we did with the array map, re <laughs> array map class.